Hi, I'm Michaela, and this is Love Michaela, a podcast where I talk about literally anything and everything I want to. Today, I decided to talk about an old K drama. It's not new, but it was new to me. Um, it's been on my list for quite some time now, um, and it is called, if you can tell from the title, Huarang. Um, also, the like full title is Huarang, the Poet Warrior Youth. Um, this show is from 2016, and um, if you don't already know, I'm a big fan of BTS, and Tay, who is one of the members of that band, um, was in that show, and also um, Park Young Sheik is one of my favorite actors of all time, and he's one of the actors in the show as well. Um, Go Ara is in the show as well, and she's like so good. She hasn't done that much lately. I think she like only recently did a movie, but she hasn't like been doing a ton of stuff for a hot minute. Um, yeah, so I thought that it might be fun to watch it finally my mom's been like asking me like over and over are we gonna watch it are we gonna watch it when are we gonna watch it when are we gonna watch it and so I finally was like okay okay we can we can watch it we had just finished um Dr. Slump which I'm debating talking about but also I don't know I kind of want to like let it be its thing um so after watching that I was like oh I want more Park and Chic so <laughs> we ended up watching Huarang um, yeah, I'm just gonna get into it. We're gonna start with a synopsis that I grabbed from online. Um, Huarang the Poet Warrior Youth is a show that revolves around an elite group of young men called Huarang, who discover their passion, friendship, and love in the turmoil of the Shilla, I think is how you pronounce it, kingdom, which, um, Shilla was one of the three, I think there's three major, like, kingdoms, um, before Korea, like, South Korea was, like, unified, um, into one big kingdom, which was the, like, Joseon era. A lot of the K-dramas that you watch nowadays are, that are the historical ones, are in the Joseon era, but this actually takes place during the era, like, before that, so it's in the Shilla kingdom. I think it's a sh sound. I don't think it's a Silla. Maybe it is. I don't know, but I don't think, because they have the she Anyway, um, so more in-depth from, like, another more in-depth synopsis that I found was Queen Jiso as regent has been the ruler of Shilla since the death of her father while keeping her son hidden from enemies and assassins. As the young king comes of age, citizens, officials, and her son himself have all grown impatient for her to cede power. However, the powerful nobles that tried to usurp the power continue to eye the throne and Jiso fears the consequences of her ceding it. In order to break the power of the nobles who have grown accustomed to their privileges under the bone rank system, Jiso plans to create a new elite group, the Huarong, that will cut across the existing power factions and to bind them to protect her son and the throne. As this new elite group of male youths bond and grow, they are unaware that within their number is the king and Kim Sunu, a commoner with a secret even he is not aware of. Basically, the show is about um, the queen who has been the queen for a very long time. Um, it's like acting as the, like the ruler of their kingdom because her father, who was a king, passed away. And her son, who was next in line, she's been keeping in hiding because he was too young. So like to keep him safe and make sure that he didn't die before he got to become king, essentially. Um, but this takes place during the time where um, her son is now kind of old enough to become king and he kind of wants the throne, but also, like, is afraid because he's been so, like, sheltered and kept. He's known as the, like, faceless king because no one knows what he looks like or, like, who he is. Um, and it's basically about whether or not he's going to become king or whether some of the nobles who are kind of around the queen who are kind of gunning for that power are, like, going to be able to like kill him before he gets to do that and kill her before she gets to like protect him from them um and so in order to like ensure that her son will be able to have enough power to stay king when he becomes king and also have people to protect him she collects this group of these young men um they're the huarang and they're like basically all the sons of the nobility of the people who are trying to take the power from her and trying to like become the rulers of the kingdom themselves and um because in a lot of dramas and I just think in history there's a lot of times where there's kind of two factions um to things so there's like a side that's on the queen's side and then a, a group of nobles that's on their own side that they have someone else that they want to be ruler um and um in order to make sure that there's not like 
basically in order to keep them from attacking her own son, she makes this group of young men called 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 Huarang and composes this group of these um, young men who are basically devoted to protecting the king and the kingdom and bringing about like a new bright beautiful future she composes she takes all of their sons of every single like noble who's been kind of gunning for power whether they're on her side or not and throws them all into a big group together and is like you all have to pledge that you like pledge your lives basically that you will be protecting the king and our kingdom as it is um which for her you can tell that like part of it is just a power thing like she wants that power wants to ensure that for now she has the power she has no like I'm sure part of her is ready to, no, I don't think she's ready to give up the <laughs> throne to her son because she thinks he isn't ready. Um, so part of it is she wants her own power, right? But also the other half of it is that she wants a group of people that are determined to help protect her son um, for when he becomes king. So the whole show is about that. Um, the like Huarong and how they come about and like some of the journeys they have to take and how they grow to become you know like the brotherhood between them and there's also like a love story that's happening again first episode is fair game in the first episode we find out that there's like well if you know history of Korea you'll know but I didn't so I didn't know this was a thing there's like a bone rank system which is basically like how close um, is your blood to the ruler of the kingdom at the time um, and so there's these people who have like no association at all, essentially, and they're like basically like slaves. And they there's these two of them who sneak into the kingdom. And then if you sneak into like the like main capital of the kingdom as someone who is, I think they're called Chonin. Um, if you sneak into the kingdom and you are of the lowest rank, you you can be killed for basically any reason. Um, they're basically not treated as like humans at all. Um, and there's like a little bit of uh so two of them sneak in and then one of them um they see the face of the faceless king and nobody knows what the king looks like because if you find out what he looks like and you're not like already actively working for him you get killed according to what the queen wants unfortunately and so um uh, one of them dies and he's like i'm gonna avenge my best friend's death and there's this whole thing that happens so there's one of the main characters um, played by Park So Joon is someone who's basically just kind of gunning for revenge for his friend and to keep his friend's sister and father safe like that's like the last like the least he can do in order to honor his friend is to protect his friend's family um, and there's you know um, the female lead played by Go Ara she is the daughter of a doctor who then becomes um, a doctor in her own right and um, she kind of has a thing with both of our two male leads, which was Park So Joon and Park Young Sheik's characters. Um, so there's a whole thing there, a romance happening there. I wouldn't really call it a love triangle. It's just that there is a second lead involved in it. Um, yeah, I don't know if I really added any substance to it. I just kind of added more detail. So hopefully I didn't make it more confusing. But the main story is following who is going to become king, how are they going to become king, and how are the Huarang going to grow and evolve and change the future of Shilla, essentially, is kind of the whole story. I feel like the one side of it is very um, brotherhood and the kingdom heavy like who's going to ascend the throne and then the other side of it is the romance aspect that's happening with our main female lead and um our two male leads yeah <laughs> um when i was looking stuff up about this because again this is older this came out in 2016 um, people were saying that the cast was a really star-studded cast, which of it, it is, of course, like our three ma main characters are especially like I know all of them. They're all like pretty well known. They've done some pretty big things um, in terms of what roles that they've had. Um, and they also had some fun actors in it, like Tay is in it, obviously, and I'm sure that that drew a good chunk of people. BTS weren't like super, super huge at the time, but they were like basically on their way up at this point, right? 2016. Yeah. They were pretty big, but, like, nowhere near where they're at now, right? But, like, so that definitely drew some people in. And then they also had Minho, who is um, one of the members of the boy group Shiny. And, of course, that's going to bring a ton of people in, right? They have a big, huge following as well. 
incredible group also I just I have to say um so they had some fun people who were acting in it too and then also there were a lot of like a lot of the older cast were people that I like recognized instantly I was like oh I've seen them and this and this and this or they look so familiar I know that they play this kind of character in like a million shows like the cast had a lot of like well-known or on the up and up actors at the time and who are really well known now I would say um or recognizable at least but a lot of people were complaining that the plot and like the story progression and how everything was kind of developing like just kind of fell flat and so there was like mixed reviews basically on how people viewed the show when it came out um yeah i'm gonna talk about the cast and then i'll go into my like thoughts on the show <laughs> um park yang Sheik is the literal love of my life i love him so much he just seems like a dream to work with. He seems like the nicest person to be around. He's an incredible actor. He's like someone who's very composed and poised, but also like still in tune with what he's doing, like when he's acting, but like also very able to like still, even though he's like poised and composed and just in tune with like the kind of character he's playing, he's also like immediately able to switch into kind of like a slapsticky comedy aspect of things. Um, if you've seen... I talk about it so much. Uh, Strong Woman Do Bong Soon, which is one of my favorites of all time. Um, he's incredible in that. It's like the some of the K dramas do really cheesy, like funny slapstick comedy stuff, even within some of their like more serious stuff. And he handles that really, really well. And I just I love like I like that he can go in between both and it doesn't feel awkward or like it's forced at all. And I really love that about him. Like he's just a good actor. He's just a really, really, really good actor. Um, I love to see him as a character that plays like I love when he plays a character who is someone who is supposed to have a lot of power, but doesn't or has it taken away or like is supposed to be getting it. But then like it might not happen. I don't know what it is about seeing him in those kind of roles. But it's just like, it's incredible. Like him in both the, like the most recent thing I watched him in besides this, which was Dr. Slump and also in um, Do Bong Soon, he plays characters that are very like high status, like on the outside to everyone else, but on the inside feels at times very low status or like they don't have any power or actual control over their lives or they've lost it. Um, I don't know what it is about seeing him do those kinds of roles, but he just plays them very well makes me curious about like in his own life what has happened that makes him like really connect to these characters I don't know if he's being typecast because he does do them really well or if these are the types of roles that he gravitates towards and that's what it is but he he just does a good job with it I just really like seeing him play these kinds of roles um he just looks like someone who should have a lot of power and he could be really really strong but he's someone who I feel can find that vulnerability and that kind of gentleness very easily and so that lends itself to being able to play someone who's high status but maybe doesn't actually have all the power that they're supposed to or has lost a lot of the power that they were supposed to have um and he he can find the comedy and the tragedy in playing these high-powered characters that are struggling with their power and I just think that's really beautiful and he does a good job with it. Also, he's just like such a cutie. He's such a cutie patootie and I love him so much. I think he's so cute. I want to act with him so bad. Do I speak Korean? No. Does Do I care about... No, I don't care. I don't care. I'll do... I'll figure it out. God, he is so... Ah, he's so good. I love him so much. So that might mean I'm a little bit biased for some of my opinions on the show. But it is what it is. I can't control that. Sorry. Okay. Our other main male lead, which is like the the male ma like the main male lead, because spoiler alert, Park Young Sheik is the second lead. That's very plain to see. I think if you've watched K dramas at all, um, to like at least a certain extent. And also, this is an old show, so like I feel like you'd probably know by now that he is the second male lead. Park So Joon, however, is our actual male lead, like our main male lead. And, um, he is great. He's a great actor. Um, he's had some controversies in the past. Hopefully he's moved past some of those things and some of those ideas he and beliefs he used to supposedly have. I don't know. That's all I'm going to say on that. But he is a really good actor. Um, I feel like he plays really good, um, he does really well when he's playing like a very strong and a manly character. I don't feel like I've seen him do anything dainty. Like I've seen him, uh, what was it? What's wrong with Secretary Kim? Is that what it's called? He's the one in that, right? I think. 
I'm pretty sure he's the one in that. Um, and that character is very like high status and poised, but it's not like super gentle. I think it's very, there's still a lot of strength behind it. And maybe it is a little bit gentle. It's more gentle than the character he plays in this, but, um, he's, he just plays characters. He's very strong as like, I think a person probably, or at least that's how he comes off. And so when he plays a character that's very strong and sometimes manly, um, I think he does really well in those kinds of roles. So seeing him in the role that he did for this, um, he did a good job with it and it looked like he really like fit the role very well. It was very, I put regal, but rough. Like he seems like someone who's a natural born leader, but is a little bit rougher and a little bit more physical in terms of how he's leading people. At least that's how he came off and that's how this character is supposed to be anyway. Um, versus someone like Hyung Shik who comes off as a leader but in a more subtle way like it's a little bit more gentle it's a little bit more based on like um like instead of physical it's more like mental and a little bit sneakier maybe I feel like Sojun wouldn't really fit someone who plays like a really I don't think he'd play a sneaky character super believably not because he can't do it like right not acting ability wise but just like casting wise I'd be like that guy's not sneaky <laughs> Maybe he is. I don't know. But um, I just feel like if you're comparing the two of them, they they represent, especially because they needed to for the show, they represent very opposite ends of that spectrum of like very rough and manly and tough and physical and I'm going to fight it out with my fist and I'm going to go for it and do the thing. I'm just going to do it. I'm not going to think about it. And then Hyung Sheik was very gentle, a little bit softer, um, a little bit less physical, more mental, more I'm going to plan this out and try and find the best course of action before I do anything, which you know, both have their strengths, their cons, and their pros, right? Um, more on that later when I talk about some other things that I don't want to spoil. Um, but I think that Sojun is just really, really great at expressing really explosive emotions and behaviors, and that was really nice to watch. Like, he, like, he really goes for it when he's acting, I think, and it's really easy for him to, like, like, anger, I think, is probably a pretty easy emotion for him to access, and like the explosive like rage seemed like really easy for him to reach into and that's not easy for a lot of people myself included so that was like really nice to watch like he's a good actor what can I say like I said the cast for this was really was filled with great actors um they're not well known just because they're pretty which a lot of them are but they're good actors too um and then of course Go Ara our female lead she's just an incredible actress um I think that she's just a person, like a human, whose emotions run really deep and it's very easy for her to access those emotions. But the con of that is that it's really easy to get kind of lost in those emotions, especially when you're acting. Like you don't want to get too into it that you can't come back from it because that's dangerous for you and also will slow production down. Like unfortunately, like not to hit it with the like <laughs> the business side of things, but it'll slow production down if you can't get out of like a really emotional moment. Like you're slowing everyone down. It happens, of course, but, like, you can't let it happen too much because, one, it slows production down, which wastes money and time for everyone, but also it's very, very dangerous, like, mentally and emotionally for people. So you have to be careful with that, but she, she's she got those deep, deep emotions and she'll tap into them. She's not afraid to do that. Um, really, whatever role she does, I feel like just, she's just a good actor. And um, this was fine. Like, I didn't mind her in this kind of role, but I prefer her in something sweet um, and cute and kind of funnier. She does comedy really well and she has these really great, I feel like I say this about a lot of people, but she really does have these great little facial expressions of like shock and surprise or like disgust. Um, and, and she does comedy really well. And so I loved her, like my favorite thing I've seen her in. And it's also one of my, not my favorite, but definitely one of my top K-dramas is um, Dodo So So La La So, which is such a long title. It's so cute, so fun and funny. I love her in it, and I also love um, Jaewook, E Jaewook, I think that's his name, the, the guy who plays the main male lead. I love him. Um, anyway, um, she's she's just a great, she's a good actor, and um, I did like her in her more serious. She was also in the K-drama called Black which is like kind of a scarier, more suspenseful, more crime type of drama. I liked her in that as well, like a more serious kind of scary role. I feel like this role that she, um, Otto, I think, is it who she was playing in this? Yeah, Otto, um, 
I feel like that character is kind of a mix of the more serious and the more sweet and funny stuff. And I feel like I actually just like her playing extremes maybe a little bit more. However, I do know like that she has talked about how she never wants to do another role like what she did in Black because she got like too sucked into it and it was too like dark for her, which is totally understandable. Like I said, I feel like she's just someone who um, really gets into it when she's doing it, which is great and makes it really nice for the viewer to watch, but it can be really dangerous and really scary for the actor to dive into stuff if it's like too much, you know? Um, but yeah, I liked all of the actors in this. The only... Th <laughs> I'm being really nitpicky when I say this. There are two actors that I did not like for their roles, but it was for very specific reasons. It's not that they were awful. It's just that they did things that really took me out of it. And like, that's not going to be the case for everyone, but it was for me. And so that's why they weren't my favorites. Um, the, I didn't like the actors. I didn't even write their names down, which I probably should have. Like, oops. Oh, well. Um, I didn't like the actors who played the princess or the queen. These are really, like, truly nitpicky things. But, um, I don't know the actress who played the princess very well. I think maybe this was one of her first roles because I know that she's done some bigger stuff now because my mom recognized her and was like, I think she was in, like, It's Okay to Not, It's Okay Not to Be Okay. Is that what that show was called? You'll know if you know. Um, she's done other stuff, like she's and she's done like some big stuff recently. I don't know if her acting is like this in everything she acts in or not. Like like I said, this is the only this is the first time I've seen her in anything, and she's younger in this, and this is an older drama, so I'm wondering if it's one of her first bigger roles or I don't know what was going on. But um her acting to me was not the best in this. It just felt kind of awkward and a little bit stiff to me. Of course, this character is a hard character to play. Like, I'm not saying I could do a better job because I don't know if I could. Maybe I could. I don't know. But, um, like, the character is really stoic and very serious and a little bit deceitful and selfish. Um, but she had, like, it felt awkward and stiff to me for some of the stuff that she was doing. And the character is supposed to be kind of stiff, but there's a way to do it that feels like that's natural for that character. And it didn't feel natural for her to me. And the other thing that, like, really bugged me, again, this is so nitpicky. Like, I'm not saying that they're bad actors at all. It's just, like, these are just little things that bother me that would take me out of it a little bit. And, of course, I have my actor brain, my film brain going, going in when I watch these kinds of things. And so I don't think everyone is approaching it like the way I am but she has this um we call these energy leaks I say we how I was taught they're called energy leaks sometimes if you're not confident in your acting ability and what you're doing your body and your brain and your mind like everything working together knows like there's something else I can be doing right now that's going to portray what I want like to the audience like it's going to get it across better but you're not letting yourself do it because you're too self-conscious about like how you look or you're thinking too many like actor thoughts instead of character thoughts or basically you're not in it as much as you need to be and so you'll have an energy leak because your body's like I need to be doing something because I need to get this across but you're holding yourself back because you're too self-conscious about it and I saw that in her and the reason it bothered me so much and the reason I noticed it so much is probably because it's the same energy leak that I have different actors will have different energy leaks and I feel like probably for different roles different people have different energy leaks for things um like maybe the same actor could have a different energy leak depending on what role they're doing so for me my energy leak and you might even notice it when I'm doing this is um I raise my eyebrows a lot I talk a lot with my eyebrows anyway I express a lot with my eyebrows as it is but one of my big energy leaks is my eyebrows so I'll raise one of my eyebrows I don't even know which one it is I'll raise one of my eyebrows like not thinking about it and it's my body's way of being like I need to get this thing across but like me holding myself back being like no I can't that's not the right way to express it um and it'll happen in a moment where like maybe I should be still or maybe an eyebrow raise doesn't really make sense but I'm not like consciously doing it it's just happening because my body wants to get this emotion out and I'm not letting it and so it comes out in like a little eyebrow raise like some people might have like a little mouth twitch or some people might like have a weird hand thing they do and that's their energy leak hers was also at least for this hers was also an eyebrow energy leak and so that really bothered me every time I saw it when I was like girl be still you got it you can do it it's basically like you don't have enough confidence in yourself to just get it across in the way that it's meant to be shown and so your body is like trying to compensate for that and so you have an energy leak that's the best way I can explain it I don't know if there's a better way to explain it, but yeah but that's why I just felt like her acting wasn't top tier as good as some of the other actors in this were which was she wasn't like a super main character but her character was important and I feel like she's gotten better probably if she's been in a lot of other things at this point I just haven't seen any of it so 
not my favorite, but it didn't ruin it. It just would take me out of it sometimes because I would notice, especially with that energy leak. The other thing that I really, that really bothered me, which is super personal, and I feel kind of bad that I don't like it because I don't think it, it's like, it's not our fault. It's not under her control at all. The actor who played the queen, I don't know if this is just how she talks or if it was because she was doing like the old historical like period piece accent that they use or not accent but like the way that they talk is different right during different time periods. I don't know if like that affected it or if that's just her normal voice and how she talked but the queen had a lisp when she talked and again like I feel bad that it bothered me so much because it's not like she has control over that or like it would be really hard to try and change it just bothered me a lot. Like it would take me out. Like anytime she had any S sounds, there was a lisp and it just really bothered me and would take me out and bugged me and pulled me out of the story, which was like a little bit annoying. Um, yeah, those are kind of my biggest complaints in terms of the cast. But again, that's, those are like really nitpicky things. It's, but she was a great actress. Like that's not, that wasn't a problem to me at all. Like she was fine. Um, it was just the lisp really took me out sometimes. And I was like, okay, like I just had to like stop thinking about it it was really hard and again not her fault um and it was a nitpicky thing but it just bothered me a little bit yeah okay <laughs> the chemistry between all of the actors playing the huarang was like really really fun and cute and i wish we'd spent more time exploring that like i understand story-wise why we couldn't um and it was only a very like not brief but it was just like one of the parts of the many things that happened to make up the whole story like i get it but i i think I would have preferred to watch a story that was more heavy on like the brotherhood aspect and like the Huarong and more time spent with them in their little like school. I would have really enjoyed that like a lot more than what it ended up being. I don't know like what happened with the writing in the story like if it was being rewritten as things. I don't know but I know other people were complaining about it when it was coming out so Maybe they changed things to adjust to what people wanted. I have no idea. But, like, I wish we'd spent more time on that because the chemistry that all those guys had was, like, so cute and so fun to watch. And I really enjoyed it. But that's me. That's just a me thing. Um, I liked the initial start to the story. And I'm not going to get into any detail because we're going to go to the spoiler section in a hot minute. Um, but I felt like they were adding twists in just to add twists in to try and, like not scare surprise the audience um I already feel like personally this is just a me thing dramas that are like period dramas are already really stressful for me I don't know what it is I guess like the idea of like living back during that time and knowing that like your life is on the line at any moment I, I mean it's still like that now but it just it feels like it was more on the line then and it doesn't matter like what level you are even the kings and queens and the princesses and princes like it doesn't matter who you are everyone's life is on the line I like the way that they play it it makes it like everyone's life is on the line at all times it doesn't matter where you are because if you're in a high position of power there are people who are going to be coming after you because they want your spot and if you're not in a high position of power someone in a high position of power like if you piss them off they're gonna just kill you and they're gonna be it's gonna be fine they're not even gonna go to jail for it so <laughs> um, so I didn't they're already stressful for me we don't need to be adding twists just to add twists in like some of them I was like okay I get it for the story and like that was fun but some of them I was like why was it necessary or were we just trying to like figure something out to try and see if it would make people happier or not um, so didn't like that. And, um, I did like that this period drama was exploring an older era of Korea. Cause like I said before, a lot of the period, like historical dramas are all ones that are about like the Joseon era, which is fine and dandy. I love those. Like I'll, I'll watch one. I need breaks in between when I watch them. I can't watch a bunch of historical ones in a row, but I'll watch one. Like I enjoy them. I think it's fun, but it was really nice to, um, watch a drama that dealt with stuff before that and I got to I mean I don't know how accurate it is I should look it up I don't know how accurate all of it is but um I got to learn like some new things like Huarong's were like that was a real thing it didn't happen like the way that the time period plays out and like in the show the Huarong I think I think they said the Huarong happened after this person becomes king and so like historically it's not accurate but like I still got to learn what Huarong were um I got to learn about the bone rank system, which I'm pretty sure was a real thing. I got to learn, like I got to learn a little bit and at least explore like a new era of Korea that I had no idea was a thing. So that was kind of cool and fun to see. Okay, that's all my thoughts for now without spoilers. 
Um, so here's the spoiler section. This is your warning. Please click away. Click to the next chapter. Go to the next time. I'll put the times in the bottom, the description if I can. Uh, it is a spoiler section and I'll let you know when they're done. Okay. Okay. Click away. Okay. <laughs> I did not have second lead syndrome at all. You might be like, what? But you love Park young Sheik. Yeah, I love Park young Sheik. I didn't have second lead syndrome for him, which if you don't know is when you wish that the second lead is actually the one who ends up with the girl and not that the ma- not the main male lead is the one who ends up with the girl. I didn't have that at all. Um, even if I am biased and I like Park young Sheik a little bit more. Sorry, I love him. I just love him so much. Um, I didn't have second lead syndrome for him, although I did feel bad for him just because I knew that it was more important for him to become king, which this is a spoiler section, so you know, he becomes king. Um, he needed to be king and make changes in the country like that was what he needed to do and he was not gonna be able to do that while worrying about loving someone like Otto who needed protection who could be seen as a weakness who people would go after just to try and get to him he didn't need that that wasn't a necessary thing for him the king thing was like more important for him in terms of character development than getting the girl and so I didn't feel bad that he didn't get the girl I was like no he doesn't need the girl he just, he, he didn't, he didn't. <laughs> so I didn't feel bad about that. I did, however, hate the idea that for like, what, the last two or three episodes, we spent time learning that Sunu, which is Park So Jun's character, it's not, I know it's not like his real name, but like, that's what he good by, he went by for most of the show, so I'm just gonna call him. Um, Sunu wanted to be king and also had the possibility of being king because now we find out he is actually one of the true bone or whatever it was called, I don't remember what it was called. He was like really close, like he was basically the, they were cousins and so he technically could also have been the king and also I think he was a little bit older or like maybe by like a couple months he was older or something like that. So like technically maybe he was supposed to be king um, over, over Hyunkyuk's character Jidui. Um, I knew he wouldn't become king. I knew, I knew he wouldn't and that he'd get the girl. But even the thought that they were going to take that away from Park young character pissed me off to no end. I was just so mad. Like I was like, why would we even think of this as the possibility? Why would this be the po- One, character-wise and story-wise, it doesn't make sense for um, Sojun's character to become king. One, he has he doesn't know how to read, which my mom pointed out to me. I was like, oh my god, you're so right. He doesn't know how to read or write not his fault and he could learn but like hello (laughs) no and he's so explosive like his like if I were to compare their biggest flaws to each other Sojun's character what is it Sanu not Sanu but Sanu Sanu is so explosive in his behavior and his feelings and he lets it take control that's his big thing that's a character thing That's fine. I think it's not bad to have someone who's willing to like explode and then take action immediately. That's great. For a king, I don't think that's gonna work. Whereas Hyungshik's character, Jidui, um, his flaw to me is that he's very inactive. But a lot of that came from his fear of thinking, I'm not going to be a good king because of the way he was brought up. That's something that I think can be more easily overcome and like taken care of so that's not a problem anymore than Sojun's character's explosive behavior. I just feel like he'd make a better king like sorry and also I was like if they leave him with nothing he doesn't get the girl or get to be king because I knew he wasn't going to get the girl Park Young Sheik's character. I knew he wasn't going to get the girl. I said if they're not going to let him get the girl and they're not going to let him be king and he had to spend his entire like childhood and into his adult life in hiding and watching people around him die and feel like he has no control over that because he kind of didn't. He did, but he didn't, right? He was young. Um, I was just going to be pissed off. I was like, this is stupid. And if that happens, I'm going to be really mad about it. I don't know if people are in the same boat as me. I don't know if more more people really wanted Sojun's character to end up king, but I was like, it doesn't make sense for him to be king. Story-wise, character-wise, just from an outside perspective, I'm like, this doesn't, it doesn't make sense. It would not make sense. Um, And yeah, so that, I didn't like the 
even hinting. Like, if it had been one episode of him being like, maybe I would want to be king. But it wasn't. That was, like, basically the main conflict of the end. And that was our big twist of who's going to be king. I was like, I don't care. It, it literally was to the point where I was like, I don't care. Because either it's going to happen exactly how I think it's supposed to happen based on stories and characters. Or it's not going to happen the way I think it's supposed to happen. And I'm going to be pissed about it. So I was like, I don't care anymore. I really don't care. Um... The ending was fine. The little twist where they come in and they trick that evil noble and, like, everyone thinks that Sojun's character, Sanu, is going to try and claim that he is um, the rightful heir to the throne and that all the Huarong are going to back him because, like, you know, he's kind of been their leader for a while. Um, and then at the last minute, they're like, we're going to pledge to our to Jin Hung? 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 I'm going to call him Jidui because it's easier to say. For, um, they all, like, show their support for Jidui instead. And they're like, yeah, long live the king, blah, 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 blah. I really liked that. Um, was it necessary to me? No, but I, it was fine. I didn't, like, dislike it. Like, I, I kind of liked it. It was kind of cute. I think that the, and they all, like, the other reason why I was like, why is he fighting so hard against him against Hyung Chik's character being king when he knows that Hyung Chik's character like wants to make the same changes that he does it just didn't make sense anyway they cover it later and they're explaining like oh no they did talk about it and then they decided like they're gonna do this whole trick blah 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 fine fine I just like didn't it wasn't my favorite thing okay um I liked that at the very end of the show they showed us like um some of the they gave us conclusions and tied up loose ends for some of the other characters like Bon Yu's character I liked that I just wish that they had done that for every single character. Like, if you're going to do some of the side characters, then you might as well show me the rest of them. It was, like, weird that they didn't show me every side. Like, even just the few main Huarong. If I had seen them, like, what happened to them. Or, like, the princess. We don't know what happened to the princess. I did see some pictures of what looked like her leading a military. I don't know if that's from a different, like, drama. Or if maybe I didn't get to see, like, the special secret ending or something. I don't know. But, like, I didn't get to see what happened to the princess at the end. And I was like, she's one of the main people that I'm like, what? So what happened with her? Like, there were just some characters that I was like, we should have also seen their ending if you were going to show me Bond Yu's ending. You know what I mean? I was just like, Ugh, whatever. That was fine. Okay, that's the end of the spoilers. Pretty short, I know. It, yeah, that's the end of the spoilers. Okay, do I recommend this drama? This drama, in my opinion, this is my opinion. Please don't hurt me. <laughs> don't attack me. Um, it's pretty mid. It's not a bad drama. It's not an amazing drama. It was fine. I think if you like the actors that are in it, it's worth it. Like, I didn't feel like I wasted my time watching it. So that's great. Um, but it's not one that I think I'm going to go back and like rewatch anytime soon, maybe ever. I'm sure I'll go back and rewatch it at some point because I like to rewatch stuff anyway, but it's not one that I'm like, I really want to rewatch this again. Or I'm like, oh, I can't wait to like wait a couple months to forget some of it and then rewatch it. It's not one that I'm like excited to rewatch. I'm looking forward to rewatching. Um... I think it's also one that you could probably, like, this drama is one that you can probably work on other things while you're watching it, because there were moments where I just got bored with it. Um, like, you could probably do, like, some kind of crocheting or knitting, or you could probably do, like, some embroidery or, like, fold something or do your laundry or, you know, stuff like that. I feel like you could do that and not miss too much, um, because there were parts where I just got boring. Um... So would I recommend it? If you like the actors, I think it's worth checking out. You don't have to finish it, but I think it's worth checking out, especially if you like those actors. And there's some big, the acting is good. Like, they're good actors in it. It's just like, it's just mid. Like, I was like, it's fine. It's not my favorite. It's not the worst. I don't hate it. I don't love it. It's just kind of in the middle. TLDR. Um, if you like historical dramas and the actors in this drama and you like the themes of love and brotherhood and justice, then you might like this drama. I don't think I really learned anything from the drama. It's an older drama, so that's fine. Um, maybe like if I had to say that I learned something that like friendship and trust, um, are important, I guess. And I think that if you want to change the world, you can't do it on your own. You have to have like people, like a community with you to like help change the world you can do little things um to change your world but to change like the entire world or to change like systems and societies I think you need like a community with you and supporting you to do that if I learned anything I feel like that's what I learned <laughs> but I don't really feel like I learned that much 
Yeah. But I mean, again, I didn't feel like it was a waste of my time. It's just not my favorite. Like it was fine. Yeah. That's it for this one. I know it's probably kind of a shorter one, but I just wanted to talk about it because I just finished it. So that is that. Thank you for tuning in and listening. And I hope you have a lovely rest of your morning, evening, day, night, week, weekend, whatever it may be for you. And I will see you next time. Love, Michaela. Bye.